back to Beating Alpha, uh, episode 102, and we have a very special guest on. As always, you know, we have a special guest for you who are going to bring a lot of value, information, real estate investing today. So with us is Herman Buendia. Uh, he and Oscar Buendia from, Re, uh, from uh, Re, Ray Brothers uh, and Good Day Capital, uh, multifamily investors through buy and hold uh, joint ventures and syndications. So, Herman, welcome to the show. I appreciate you being on. Hi, right, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Uh, I've been listening to your podcast and watching your uh, YouTube channel, and you got very impressive guest. Uh, and so I feel humble uh, to even be here. So appreciate it. Wow, thank you, thank you, thank you again for the uh, for the plug a little bit. GoodDayCapital.com. You should go and check it out. The website that I'm looking at actually at the moment. So again, coming back to, to you and your personal journey, I think a lot of people will get to know you a little bit better, even though like we connected on social media and of course people can do the same. All the links are going to be down below for you guys and girls to do that. But can you give a little bit of background, like where you're coming from and how did you get involved with the real estate business? Awesome, man. So I'll, I'll make I'll, I'll make sure uh, short the uh, the whole story of the uh, youth and all that stuff. But basically, oh, uh, we come from uh, we were born in, in Colombia. Uh, we migrated to the U.S. in '93, um, and then uh, we we were raised in New Jersey, and uh, uh, we came from from very humble beginnings with my family. I mean, living it was uh, five of us living in a small apartment. Um, all in one, basically one studio. Um, it was, from my perspective, the best years of my life. Um, I never felt like I was poor. I never felt like I was broke or my family were broke. They, my parents, they always worked. Um, but I, I never saw my life from that perspective. And, but we, all, we were always very ambitious. Uh, we were the type of kids that my parents told us always, hey, whatever you put your mind into, you can do it. Uh, but wow. they never gave us the, the, the book on how to do it. Um, so anyway, um, going for a, I joined the, uh, the Marine Corps in 2002. Uh, about eight, nine years later, my brother joined the Air Force. And um, I've been in the Marine Corps almost 19 years. So I'm about to retire soon. And uh, we came into real estate uh, out of, I think, looking on the way out of being you know a w-2 employee uh my brother and i always had that entrepreneurial uh, um, spirit so we were trying to figure it out i, I got it, uh, involved in very different ventures throughout my marine corps career uh, but then my brother in like, around 2015 he he called me and he's like hey man i'm reading this book and you should read it too and obviously, it's like most of us start with rich dad, poor dad. And, and that's basically how, how I got involved in real estate. And I started investing, first of all, in myself uh, with education, you know, podcasts and books and um, just uh, different uh, social media channels that I could get into and start reading and asking questions. Um, I did my little invest, investments here and there, and, and I made a lot of mistakes uh, on the way. Uh, so that's basically how how I got started in uh, in uh, in real estate back in 2015 with that with that little book. <laughs> that is that is awesome. That is a great great cool story. So and, and the cool part is uh, that actually both of you as brothers are involved into the business, which yeah. uh, you know in some cases it doesn't happen in life. You know because you always hear these stories. One brother is a successful business owner and another one is working in McDonald's. So yeah, and and, and that's. That's basically how we started. I mean, we started back in 2015. Again, uh, the two of us educating my, uh, ourselves. Uh, I was doing fix and flips, and my brother was doing his own thing. Uh, we were both in different sides of the, uh, in different parts of the uh, of the states or the world, in that case. And uh, he was doing buying holes. He had a, a duplex. He started with a duplex in Colorado. I started doing fix and flips in California. I, I'm currently in California. And um, and then last year, that's when we decided to to get together and and venture together. And I mean, I don't, I don't, I honestly cannot answer why we didn't do it before. But I'm glad we did it because yeah, we're, now we're we're actually making it. And I love it. Got it, got it, got it. Awesome. So you probably had uh, more than one kind of you know conversation with him, you know, on a table like, hey, we need to put something together. 
again combine combine the forces so yeah that, that, that is awesome so can you talk about again from um military perspective and again uh you know like even though i'm not from states i don't know where you served but thank you for your service thank you uh, so can you talk about how serving in the military actually helped you to succeed in real estate business man that's a great question and and i started to realize uh until now how the uh, the military and all the training that i got throughout the years are helping me shape uh who i am right now uh, while I was serving, and I I couldn't see myself, and I would always question myself, what kind of skills am I getting, you know, in regards to business? Because I always wanted to get into my own business and then real estate, and I always was like, okay, well, what am I getting out of this? Um, and and now that I'm 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 looking, you know, I'm, I'm talking to uh, uh, to prospect uh, investors and I'm, I'm trying to get into different ventures with other people in social media, for example, all the meetups that we do, our own podcast that we do. I think uh, there's a lot of great skills that I got from the military. One is um, being disciplined. Uh, the other one is public speaking. I mean, in the military, we do public speaking uh, whether we like it or not, they throw us out there and be like, "Hey, man, you're a leader now. You have to, you have to guide these people no uh, in in this mission." So it's from from early age, um, I had to get used to that to be able to to do public speaking to get the message across, and um, so I think that those are the one of the most uh, very important skills that I've that I've learned throughout the years, and um, and yeah, so public speaking and then. Uh, that relationship, uh, building relationships, uh, helped me a lot too. Got it. Got it. So where you actually are in the moment, as I mentioned, you're right now in California. That's where you live. Correct. Yes. Okay. And your brother is? Uh, he's right now in Virginia. Virginia. Okay. So yeah. how do you like? Okay. So first of all, maybe if we talk about your real estate business, I mean, uh, like, what type of deals do you have in a pipeline, and what type of deals are you looking for at the moment? Uh, so right now we owe uh, 20 units in in uh, in Ohio. Uh, we came Completely out across. State. Oh yeah, uh, we came across uh, this portfolio in Ohio, uh, and it's a very interesting story. I don't know if you want to get into it. Of course, uh, we want to. Okay, <laughs> so but but let me answer your question first. The, uh, so yeah, uh, we got into this this deal in Ohio. Uh, um, it's a it's a portfolio of a mix of small multifamily and single families. Um, and, and once we got into that portfolio, uh, we started getting deals, uh, from multifamily, you know, 50 unit buildings, hundred unit buildings, and, and they just open up our minds to a new world, you know? Uh, so right now we're focusing in, uh, uh, Tampa Bay area and the uh, Southwest of Florida, multifamily, uh, 10 to hundred, uh, units, uh, B and C class. Uh, mm -hmm. in in type of assets that we can increase the NOI um, via operation, updating the operation of the uh, of the assets. So that's what we're getting to. Um, and if you want, I can dive into the story of how we want we, to. That's what I'm waiting for. Uh, man, it, it was pretty exciting. So uh, back last year, uh, around August, my brother and I started the the, the conversation of. I, I keep hearing Ohio, 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 as you know, more investors were, were getting there. And the entry point in Ohio, if you're not familiar, is, is very low. Um, the, uh, the taxes are very uh, investor friendly. Uh, the, uh, the laws are very investor friendly as well, especially on the real estate side. So, um, so my brother told me, he's like, hey, go to Ohio uh, for a week, uh, everything paid. So he paid for that trip. Um, I went out there, man, and I'm a I'm a network freak. Uh, I like to talk to everybody. I like to go out there and uh, meetups. I enjoy being in meetups. I enjoy asking questions and all that stuff. So, um, so I went to Ohio, and in and, and the way I did it is I I started putting a post on Facebook and telling everybody on those uh, on the uh, uh, real estate uh, groups, and hey, I'm I'm heading to Ohio. From this date to this date, and I want to meet, you know, real estate agents. I want to meet brokers. I want to meet uh, uh, wholesalers, property managers. I mean, you name it. And I started getting all this feedback and all these messages, like, "Hey, man, whenever you come, come in and see us." 
the um, the perspective that most people have is that people from California, I think money grows on trees or something like that. Uh, because, I mean, I was getting all this feedback and it's like, my God, I want to talk to you, this and that. I was like, okay, cool. Um, I fill out my, my, my calendar and I started, you know, uh, when I went out there, I started seeing people, you know, from, from the moment I woke up until late at night. And then this lady approaches and, and she's like, hey, I'm selling my portfolio. I'm retiring. And um, would you be interested? And back then, it was, she was selling about 300, uh, uh, 300 of her properties. And our goal was only to get maybe one or two properties. That was our, uh, when we talk about limited beliefs, that's what I, we thought we were going to be able to, to close on. And so I was like, okay, uh, let me see. Maybe I can find partners that we can partner up and close on this, on this deal. Uh, to make a, a long, short, uh, a long uh, story short, um, we, I, I got into with one of my connections and, uh, that I have here in California, and she helps us out close on, on 13, 13 of those properties. And uh, that's when the whole uh, notion of uh, multifamily came to us. And then we started learning about uh, syndication. It's like, okay, what's syndication? And, and um, we started educating ourselves and, and uh, we started our, our uh, social media channels, which we had no idea of before, you know, more networking. Uh, so that's where everything started. Yeah. Okay. That that's a that's a good yeah that's a good story. That's awesome. So can can you talk about uh, again maybe when it comes to your like giving advice to the people because maybe there's a few people or probably more than a few people who are watching and they want to get involved with the business, but is like what is the first step that are supposed to be taken? Is it the books? Is it like should I go and network with people? Like what would you recommend for those other people? If I could go back, I would say. Um network uh, because you read books and usually the type of books that are or, or the type of information that is mostly available for 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 people is what you see on HGTV I don't know if you're familiar with that yeah. you know flip, flipping houses um, and then you start getting into that right uh, you read you go into uh, into you start listening to podcasts and you start buying those books that give you uh, like a short-term plan, you know, and, and you think that you're going to get rich with that. It's like, oh my God, I'm going to flip a few houses. That's a lot of money. Um, and then and then you never raise the ceiling on on your beliefs, right? And Or you never get exposed to to other assets, in, even in real estate, uh, like multifamily. Like I said, we, we spent almost six years investing in, in, in single families. And then it's really difficult to scale up. So if you're thinking... If you're thinking big uh, from the beginning, if you have that mindset, if you're, uh, um, if you if you want to grow a business, uh, I would say go and network, and and see and hear other stories, you know. Um, and then of course, you know, you go to the books and you go to podcasts and you go to all that stuff. And what I would recommend, if I could go back, find a mentor as soon as possible, invest on mentorship uh, in somebody that is reliable, that has a, a, a good a history of, of mentorship. And, um, and that's how I would start if I could go back. Got it. So you have a mentor at the moment also, right? Yeah, correct. Actually, I got his shirt right here. <laughs> uh, Jake and Gino. I don't know if you're familiar with Jake Oh, and yeah, Gino. yeah, yeah. I, I see the t-shirt. Yeah, I wanted to mention that. That is awesome. That's a good crowd to be in with. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's one of the best investments that we've that we've made uh, with Jake and Gino, and um, and I I actually recommend it to anybody that wants to get into multifamily. Wheelbarrow profits, that is awesome. Oh yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. great, great. Yeah. So can you talk about again? Because uh, you you mentioned that more than a few times again that you kind of created the social medias and you kind of leveraged that you know to like so I don't want to kind of give it away, but can you talk about? how the social media creating all those channels help you in, in the business, like in this day and age, like, is it, is it something that people should have it or is it like, ah, it's not important. Oh man. I, I tell people all the time. So we grew everything organically. Um, I, I actually, uh, I was listening to one of your podcasts the other day and, and 
somebody was kind of mentioning, I think it was one of the real estates, one of the last uh, episodes in the real estate was talking about she's really good with social media. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and you yeah. mentioned Amanda, that she's doing TikToks. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But uh, we didn't know anything about social media. Uh, in, 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 on, the, on that episode, you mentioned that it's very easy to buy your followers or your likes mm-hmm. and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, so if we grew our social media, we're growing it organically, uh, where we don't, we don't pay for any services, we don't pay for any likes, we don't pay for, uh, for any of that. Um, so we're growing slow, but our followers are uh, the type of followers that we want to get followed by. Um, mm-hmm. Another thing that I tell people is the podcast is the new business card. If you don't have a podcast and you're in, in business, uh, whatever business that you have, I mean, you're missing out on a lot. Um, yeah. uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, LinkedIn is a big one for us too. Um, Facebook, I mean, anything that, that provides exposure uh, to you and your business and even your personal life a little bit, you know, people want to know that, that you have a personal life, that you have a family uh, that you're human. <laughs> so I think, I think it's great. You know, social media is, is the best thing that you can do in regards to podcasts. Um, the way that, that we, that we benefit from our podcast is the fact that we reach to so many people with so much knowledge, um, in, it, it, I mean, at a way higher level than what we are right now. And we're able to ask those questions that normally if you call one of these guys, and you, hey, can I can I pick your brain real quick? They wouldn't even answer the phone. Mm-hmm. Uh, but with a podcast, it's so it's amazing because they answer all your questions, and not only that, but you're sharing that information with the, your audience, whoever is following you. Um, so it's a win-win on all sides. Not only that, but they get to promote their businesses in our podcast as well. So if you, yeah, a podcast is is a great way to promote your business, educate yourself, and educate your audience as well. Got it. Got it. Yeah, de- definitely. Having social media is so something for for every business. I mean, we're living in a digital age, so that's something to consider. Yep. Not even consider, but must have one of those things. So when exactly. it comes to your, so when it comes to your personal portfolio, I mean, uh, what do you think is your approach? Maybe I mean, right now, maybe you're. I'm just gonna be again guessing. You're focused in multifamily, you know, syndication kind of type of deals. But what is your overall thought on diversifying? Like, are you planning to invest into other commercial properties, you know, like retail, shopping centers, office space? Like, are you planning to do that in the future? Uh, Not currently. Our plan right now is to, uh, uh, we flipped the, our plan from the beginning was to flip the portfolio uh, that was under managed. So basically we deal with the portfolio uh, what what you do with multifamily? You know, you 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 take a, a an asset that is under managed, and then you uh, you increase the NOI. That's basically what we do with the, with the portfolio. We're selling it right now in order to deploy that into uh, into multifamily. Our focus right now is just multifamily. Um, however, we've we've learned and we've uh, also had different contacts that are interested in in hotels and transform those hotels into uh, um, short-term rentals. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's probably the, something that we will get into and also uh, self-storage. Uh, but that's, that's uh, down the line. Uh, but we want to focus in, in what we're learning right now and, and what our immediate network is doing. Makes sense. Yeah, makes mm-hmm. sense. So it's coming back to the wheelbarrow profits and what Jake and Genius is telling you guys. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah so, but it, it's, it's great. I, and I don't, I don't mean to cut you off, but it, it's no, great no. because when you, start, when you start doing what you're doing, the podcast, right, um, you're a little more di- diversified than we are in regards to, to the podcast, but then you get all these guests that are doing different things and you're like, oh, my God, uh, I didn't know, you know, and, and it's the same model. Uh, it's different assets. But it, it gives you an idea how to diversify at the uh, in the future. So yeah, got it. Yeah, okay. So talking about the current multifamily deals, can you kind of walk us through uh, again? I know you mentioned you know the states that you're currently looking at and the, the type of deal uh, criteria as well. Uh, so right now we're looking into uh, into Florida, South Florida, and Tampa, uh, BSE, BNC uh, assets, and our goal or our criteria is to uh, uh, mom and pop and uh, 
the the business model is to increase the NOI by um, by decreasing the uh, operation expenses. Um, so that's basically it. Uh, right now, we don't we're not looking into uh, into increasing the rents due to the circumstances. I don't think we're going to be able to increase rents for a little while. Um, uh, so that's the, the, the projections and that's basically what our business model is going to be in the type of assets that we're looking for. Uh, 10 to, I mean, yeah, 15 to 100 units uh, to start with. Got it. So for, is there any particular reasons why you chose Florida and not other states? Uh, Florida right now is hot. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, international investors uh, interested in Florida. Uh, Florida, I, I'm, once I retired, I'm moving to Tampa, uh, within the, hopefully by the end of the year. Uh, but Florida, I see it as, us being from Colombia, uh, we have a different perspective. And you know, because you're overseas too, uh, you see a different perspective. Um, is we Even though we are here in the center of uh, the economic uh, world, the makeup of the economy, uh, we were also from, from another country and we see we we have a perspective on how other people see the United States uh, for investors. Uh, so so our goal eventually is to bring overseas investors from uh, from South America, Central America, to invest in uh, in the in the states in in real estate. The uh, the entry uh, for for the United States for South Americas. In, in the United States is is Florida. Uh, it used to be Miami, uh, but now I think I think the Southwest is becoming that uh, that Miami is gonna be that um, is gonna is gonna become just like Miami, but with real estate. Got so it. that's that's why we chose uh, uh, Florida. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So because I came across a lot of people, they talking about different states, you know, like Arizona and Georgia and everybody have their own kind of favorite states. Some people saying, oh no, Georgia is the best, you know, like th there's no better markets than you're saying like Florida is. So, so everybody have their own kind of personal picks. So like you, you mentioned, you know, about getting a retired this kind of year and kind of moving there, you know, at some point. So like, what are you looking to get accomplished? I mean, this year until the end of the year? Uh, right now, we don't see, uh, we're looking for deals, obviously, uh, but we're not seeing the, that many deals out there. I think sellers are uh, either afraid or, I, mean, I don't think there's a need for them to to, to sell right now, uh, because maybe their NOIs kind of picked down during the, uh, during the COVID. Uh, but they know that eventually, when when things normalize, they're able to to raise their NOI. So um, either they're on denial, or they don't feel they need to sell right now, or um, they don't want to lose any money. You know, they'll they'll rather uh, ride the wave and sell later. Uh, so our what we're trying to accomplish right now is set up the systems, um, uh, get the team together. Uh, to where whenever the opportunities uh, come up, then we're going to be able to execute and, and be able to do good uh, to our investors. Mm, got it. So, and you mentioned that you're looking for deals uh, just in Tampa or are you looking at other cities as well? No, we're looking in other cities. All Southwest uh, is really good market, uh, especially south of Tampa. The cap rates compared to Tampa, Orlando, Miami, uh, even Jacksonville are are higher. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, and not only that, but it's one of those. And probably now that I'm saying it, a lot of people are gonna start looking into the map and be like, "Oh, that's what he's talking about." Um, but there's a lot of uh, there's there's not that many investors um, from here in the U.S. looking at those markets. There's a lot of investors from overseas looking at that at the specific markets. Um, but that's basically that's the main reason why we're looking at those. We're also partnering with uh, with other investors, especially from from the uh, from the Jake and Gino community, that are looking into other markets. And if we're able to help them out, you know, finding finding deals or raising money, then we're we're partnering with those people as well. It's just that 
we as a company, my brother and I, and the uh, the teams that we work with, we want to focus on the uh, on managing assets mm -hmm. specifically in Tampa or yeah, they, or South Florida. Yeah, it makes sense because at the end of the day, if you're going to move from California and your brother is going to move there, maybe at some point as well. I mean, you will have a you know, if you're going to have like a vertically integrated property management team, maybe at the same time, you know, in, in like in, in Florida state, or maybe it's going to be third party, but at least you're going to be there, which is the key in real estate business, staying close to, to your deals. And I, exactly. love, and I love the fact that you're actually going and again, probably that's what Jake and Gino use the strategy going and looking for mom and pop kind of, you know, mismanaged or you know they never raised the you know rents in 30 40 years and there's a lot of that you can do a lot of upsides for for those type of deals but like what will be kind of the price point if we're talking like per door price like what are we looking at like what's the price point that you're looking to acquire these deals on uh right now we're looking at uh, uh we found deals uh in the c class in tampa or san pete actually in around 75 to 85 uh, per door um, in the Tampa, it's a little bit more expensive. In Tampa, in uh, B class, is a little more expensive. We're talking about uh, 105, 120 uh, per door. Uh, down south, we're looking at C, probably the uh, in the in the 70s to 80s. Uh, in the uh, C class, in the uh, B class, and that's basically what we're looking for: B and Cs. Uh, we're looking at maybe. Uh, 90 to 110 per door mm -hmm. so yeah that's that's what we're looking for Got or that's so, what we that's what we're finding <laughs> okay yeah. so, so when it comes to the capital reserve i mean how much money are you looking to de dedicate to the projects is it going to be the like heavy value add you're looking to do or kind of like a light one or like what is the strategy you, you're looking to use no right now we're looking at a uh, um, light value add uh something that we could come in we can fix uh like i said it's more of the uh, operations um mm -hmm. and then and then able to reposition ourselves or sell it within five to seven years and uh, uh we have um we can actually claim that we have the experience on how to get that done uh especially with the portfolio that we got and uh, that we acquired back in november and we were able to accomplish that during the COVID um which was very hard it was unexpected um uh, we were planning on going in and out and then we're riding along it's gonna be a year already uh but we finally got through so yeah mm. that's what we're planning on doing got it so can you talk about the financing i mean uh, like from a financing standpoint like how are you planning to structure those deals uh so depending on the deal we're planning on either doing with our own capital uh financing or yeah either uh closing with our own capital uh or syndication and depending then, on the size of the property yeah. exactly depending, depending on the size of the deal uh or uh jv you know so mm -hmm. it, it depends on that uh but most likely right now we have uh several investors interested on the uh, on the markets that we're looking at so uh so it's just a matter of raising the money and then financing uh, Jake and Gino have a great uh, rent capital, and uh, uh, hopefully, hopefully we can we can utilize them when uh, when the deals come up. Got it, got it. So, can you talk about again for the people who are looking? Because again, you're talking about syndication deals. So, uh, for the people who again, we have a few few episodes that kind of talk syndication deals. But for the people who never came across what real estate syndication is, can you give a kind of ten thousand feet uh, view, like what 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 it is? And the way 10,000 feet. Uh, yeah, I mean, syndication is, is basically when uh, when people come up with, uh, with a different, uh, with a pool of money uh, to invest in, uh, in an asset, you know, uh, there's, and I don't want to get into, into all the aspects, mm -hmm. uh, all the legal, uh, legal side of, of syndication, but basically is uh, either, either you are a, um, a sophisticated investor uh, or um, you are an accredited investor, uh, which I don't know if you want me to get on the details of that, uh, well, but it's basically yeah. it's basically a bunch of, you know, a bunch of people getting in uh, with a pool of money investing on a, on a deal. And then those investors get uh, passive income and returns once the asset is repositioned or sold. Um, 
uh, for them to invest in those. And, and usually the returns, or at least what we're looking at, the returns are around 8%, 8 to 9% uh, annual returns. And then uh, uh, we split 70, 30, uh, 70 for the investors and 30 for the asset management. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. So, I mean, so if, if we're going to get a little bit more into specifics, because I, I think, uh, you know, I, I don't think I know, because I mean, I get across, uh, like I came across uh, people, I come across people almost all the time, uh, like every day telling about, you know, when I talk with the business owners locally in Ireland, they're like, you know, everybody kind of looking the ways to, to grow the wealth, you know, to preserve it, to grow it, to protect it against inflation, you know, like bank is not going to do the job, you know, to, to, you know, to take care of and, and grow your money. So they're looking to ways to position that capital somewhere. So like, what is the, like, how does it work? I mean, are you planning to accept only the, the U.S. Uh, people at the moment on your deals or, or is it going to be available for uh, foreign investors also? So uh, that's a great question, man. Uh, that's something that we've been talking to, and that's one of the reasons why we're trying to go to, to Tampa, because we see a lot of overseas investors. Um, right now, we have people overseas that are interested in investing with us, uh, that contacted us and in, in are interested in that, in that type of markets. And that's why we're trying to see how it's accomplished. Uh, we haven't done it. We haven't done the research on how it is done, uh, but we wouldn't be we wouldn't be close to the idea of um, accepting uh, investors from overseas. It's just that we haven't got to that level yet. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that I mean, just like with any business, you know, if you got the opportunity, you get into the opportunity, you start figuring out. Um, we do have the network and the uh, advisors and mentors that have done it. And, and that we can actually rely on for advice once those opportunities arise in, um, and they can help us out with that, with that type of process. But yeah, we're not close to the, uh, to the idea of uh, foreign investors. Actually, I like the idea. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think yeah. so, because, yeah, there's a lot of people, uh, you know, I, I jump on these calls uh, without doing podcasts. I spoke with this guy who has a successful kind of, they, they do the, you know, loans and they do the financing, they provide that, but they, they work kind of with the, you know, with the Blackstone type, uh, you know, um, you know, people and they're like, they're very sophisticated, but they're talking about like Korean people are looking to invest, like pouring capital into states, uh, Japan. I mean, there's people all over the place, all over the globe, because they see U.S. as, you know, this kind of, this holy grail, you know, that you can yeah. uh, protect and, and grow your wealth at the same time. So, so of yeah. course people are looking, yeah. Yeah, and not only, we're not only uh, uh, open to that idea of, of bringing investors from overseas, but we also eventually plan to invest overseas. Uh, so as okay. we learn, we look at other markets. Um, one of my personal dreams is to eventually invest in Cuba. You know, I, I love Cuba and I think Cuba is going to be a great market once the United States or, or Americans are able to invest in Cuba. So, um, I mean, I mean, the, uh, the, the opportunities are everywhere, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, and as you meet people like you, you know, you started learning about other countries, other cultures. I've traveled uh, with the Marine Corps. I travel all over the world. Uh, so I can see that, you know, being from another country, I can see the opportunities in other countries. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, it's, it's just a matter of as you grow, as you get more sophisticated, as you yeah. grow your network and people bring you ideas, uh, you start looking into those and you, you kind of start researching into into a how, how can i get it done you know, it. and that's how the um, investing with people from overseas came up mm -hmm. and like i said it's just a matter of figuring out and then once the opportunity comes we'll we'll get into it yeah exactly just a matter of time yeah exactly so when it comes to you and your brother i mean how do you split the the job i mean who does what in your business how do you how do you split split it and how do you know like weaknesses and strengths and i mean how do you position you both of you in the business man i love that question man um my brother and i, and I compliment each other immensely uh man i wish my brother was here today because he yeah. is the he's the brains i mean he is the uh the brainiac uh here um i am more of the uh, relationship guy you know i i i talk to everybody i I bring the deals in, uh, I, I bring the investors in. Um, I do a lot of the social media, the videos and all that stuff. 
uh, my brother and I complement each other on that way that he is, um, he, he has the, the, the mind to build the processes and, and be like, okay, this is how we're, this is what we're doing, this is how we're doing. And this is the processes. And he, he, he can visualize that, ex that structure of the business. Um, I can see the big idea and I bring the ideas in sometimes like, hey, why don't we do this? Oh, okay, cool. He gets into like, okay, this is how we're gonna do it, step by step. Um, so we complement each other on that because I, I am not that type of guy. Uh, he, my brother, it is it. Uh, so that's why I think we complement each other so much. So when it comes to the business, um, he's very analytical. Um, and so whenever I bring deals and I look at them and then I bring it to him and then he can just break it down to, to my, my new steps uh, or, or analyze it to the, to the penny and be like, okay, cool. This is, this, this is, this is what we're doing and this is how we're doing it. Um, and he has that that um, the patience to to do it. I don't. I get desperate. I'm like, okay, here you go, man. Break it down. Let me know what I need to do. And so yeah, we complement each other on that. He's he's very analytical. That is awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, yeah. So again, coming back to the point that I said, you know, that both of you are working on the same business, you know, like literally brothers, same business, running it and looking to accomplish these goals. I mean, it's like 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 that doesn't happen very often, you know. And at the same time that you have the like different strengths you know at the same time like you you're more you know looking ten thousand feet and talking you know like connecting with people uh, making those relationships happen and he's more kind of analytical guy and look go, goes through the numbers i mean what's the what's the chance of that happening you know that, i don't know man but i'm so grateful that yeah. that i'm actually doing it with my brother is it's yeah. amazing yeah that is awesome so talking about kind of you know, it, it will be kind of esoteric uh, question for you, but uh, I mean, you're doing all these great things. First of all, you decided, you know, we need to come up like with a business. So we came up with a business, multifamily investing. If I follow Jake and Gino advice, now you're going meeting a lot of, you know, great people. You're being on a path, podcast just like this one. So you're going, going all over the place and people can see on social media. And I mean, you're doing all these great things and people see you all over the place. But the esoteric question is, is what is the one thing that you always want people to remember about you when you meet them? Uh, when, when I meet them, yeah. um, that, that I want them to remember about me, uh, that they can count on me. Um, if, if they ask for, for anything that I, that, yeah, they can count on me and, and without, without any expectations just you know that um that type of guy that I do help him out as much as i can yeah got it got it so i have the last question which is uh, of course relates to everything which you guys are doing like what is the legacy that you want to leave behind you oh dude that's a big one um my legacy i think is uh I, I always tell my, my, my brother, our last name, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know if you, if you know too much about uh, literature, especially from, uh, from Latin America, uh, but there is this guy, uh, uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Let me Google from, it quick while we're oh, talking. Oh, there you go. Gabriel Garcia from uh, 100 Years of Solitude. Okay. So our last name, Buendia, is, is, I mean, it was a little famous back then when that type of literature was, uh, was on a peak. Um, but I tell my brother all the time, it's like we, I want our name to be recognized and, and, and eventually I want my son to, to say that I'm his hero <laughs> and, and for him to, to whenever I'm not in this world anymore to, to say, hey, you know what, I, I tried and, and I wanted to be somebody greater than my dad, but it, it took a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't easy. So that's my personal legacy. Uh, uh, so to, to, to make our name known and, and then just at a, at a personal level, spiritual level for my son to, to say those words one day to be like, you know what? It took a lot of work to, to beat my dad. <laughs> Mm, that is awesome. That is awesome. That that's good. Yeah, and I probably need to uh, message Oscar and ask him personally what what his legacy is. But I'm sure he has. Oh, definitely. Own. We both have we have different different ideas <laughs> on that. Uh, yeah. But the, the good thing is that we have the same goal. You know, yeah. uh, our yeah. name, and not only that, but uh, eventually, uh, 
be able to give, you know, give back. Uh, we're doing it at a scale and you're doing it too. I mean, you, you know, with the podcast, uh, even though we're learning a lot and, and we're taking all this knowledge to, to benefit us, uh, eventually everything that we do, everything that, that is benefiting us and with our deals, with our business, with, we're going to benefit a lot of other people, uh, the community, the investors, uh, families, you know, people that we eventually are going to be able to hire. Um, you know, if we get into other ventures, into other business, into other assets, I mean, it's kind of, it's a lot of people that you uh, impact and, and that's basically where you want to get to, you know, uh, that you want to be able to give more than what you're receiving. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Awesome. So Herman, I really appreciate you being today on the show. I mean, uh, a lot of great pieces, a lot of, uh, like, I love the journey. The fact that you, yeah. as you talked about, like uh, you mentioned, like five people in a small apartment, right? Like kind of, kind of the the rough beginnings. And I mean, I've been there. I mean, a lot of people have been there, you know. But uh, you know, decided to 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 stay in that position, you know, mentally, physically, and you want to make those changes. And at the same time, you want to impact a lot of people while you're building your own business. And and it's beautiful. So I love it. Yeah. So that, thank you, man. Yeah. So just one thing uh, for you guys and girls who is watching this episode, just want to ask you if you can share this episode with a friend of yours, you know, that one who always talks about, you know, wants to invest in real estate, wants to be part of it, wants to do something, but never pulls the trigger. I know this episode is going to be good for him or her uh, on motivation, strategies, techniques. So make sure to pass it along. Uh, again, Herman, I appreciate you today being on the show. And as always, I will see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.